And then finally, there is this gift of an apostle. And this is the one who sees the church as being sent on mission with God. Now, there's three different ways that the word apostle is used in Scripture, just as there are three different ways that the word prophet is used. The first way is the big A, the big P. And Ephesians 2.20 says this is the, these gifts were the foundation of the church. And so there were apostles who knew the risen Christ, who were called to be apostles. And Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 says that he was the last of the apostles, that Christ appeared to him on the road to Damascus. And God called him in the flesh. The risen Christ appeared to him in his resurrected body, and called Paul to be an apostle. He was a big A apostle, gave us the word of God, big P prophet, giving us the letters of scripture. And the early church understood that there was a difference between the big A apostles and little A apostles. And so Ignatius of Alexandria, or Ignatius of Antioch in AD 110 said, I do not command you like Peter and Paul. They were apostles. I am a sinful man. You see, he understood that there was a category, categorical difference between the apostles and the prophets who gave us the written word of God, the New Testament, and that this foundation now is being built upon through the ages with small a apostles and small p prophets and pastors and teachers who equip God's people and evangelists who equip God's people to be bricks in the living temple, the living church that goes down through the ages. But there are churches today that are started by people who have a small a apostolic gifting. And oftentimes these people really resonate with what Jesus said in John 20, 21, Peace I give to you, as the Father sent me, so send I you. And so there's the big A apostles who were sent. There's the small A apostles who were sent. And really every Christian, in a sense, is a sent one. And every Christian is to shine forth God's truth. So there's really three levels of these gifts. But the one that we're looking at now is the second level, a gifted leader who has apostolic genius, as Alan Hirsch has called it. And so these people are oftentimes those who are sent among the churches, as Barnabas was, as messengers and representatives with a concern for the churches. And they're also those that plant new churches because of the apostolic gifting. Now, I've hoped, I hope you've heard me that what I believe is that a lead pastor will have one, perhaps two of these giftings, and that the way that church is done needs to match the gifting of that lead pastor. But then they need to be careful to build a complementary team. And indeed, if that's not done, then what we have is a problem as it relates to this diagram. For you see, if a person is a gifted teacher, but they never bring in people who want to be on mission, they never shine forth the truth into the, into the culture in experimental ways, they don't find those who are gifted as evangelists to teach God's people in evangelism, what happens is, is that they're simply a core church. They're a core of people who are well taught, but they don't do anything more. 
And that's the danger of a church that has a gifted teacher that doesn't bring on the other gifts as part of the leadership team. They become a core church. My favorite example of this is a church in Texas. And they were so committed to teaching that they had a Christian school. And they were so committed to that Christian school that if you came to that church, you had to send your kids to that Christian school. Nobody could go send their kids to a public school. And as a result, they were just a little core of people that never grew until a pastor came in, and this was really a wise move, who was more of a pastor teacher, and he said, I'm going to send my kids to the public school and changed it from being a core church to now attracting more that were committed Christians as well, not just this one little faithful core who all believed the same thing. And so teachers are especially good with teaching the core of the church who are the strong, mature Christians who eat the meat of the Word of God. Pastors understand that we must be committed as well to those who are maybe not core people, but they're committed And let's get them involved in starting small groups. And let's get them involved in evangelism. And let's get them involved in one-on-one disciple making. And let's bring them into more ministry service and operation. Pastors have that vision and that heart. And then the person who is the one who is a gifted evangelist, they will move beyond where the focus of a pastor teacher is and that is on the Christians and the committed people who are serving and the core people an evangelist wants a crowd and so oftentimes in a church where there's a gifted evangelist there'll be a core of people who support this gifted evangelist to preach the gospel to a mixture of Christians and non-Christians on Sunday morning and that that works And that's kind of like a Willow Creek church. That's like some of the Southern Baptist churches in America. They grew that way from having a gifted evangelist and the core people bringing their friends and they found Christ at the church. But again, the danger is is that if teachers and pastor teachers are not brought in as well, then then this becomes just one big circle of a large group of shallow, immature Christians rather than moving them to being mature in Christ as well. And then finally, there's the mission into the city. And this is the apostolic gifting. The person who has apostolic gifting, their heart is to be on mission, to be on mission with God in the city, to see that Jesus said, as the Father sent me to the whole world, So too I am sent, so too we are sent, and we are to be on mission, not just in the church, but into the city. And so those, especially with apostolic gifting and also with evangelistic gifting, will be with those with a heart for the city and bringing people to Christ by not just inviting them to church. Those who have apostolic gifting understand, no, I have to go to them. We have to go start ministries that will touch them. We have to go make contact with them. We need to go and start new churches. And that's that apostolic genius and that apostolic heart. And so I hope we can see that God has designed his church so that even at the leadership level, we need those that are a lead pastor, a lead overseer, 1 Timothy 3.1. If you desire to be an overseer, it's a noble work. I believe every church should have one overseer, one lead pastor. But then that lead pastor must not act alone. There needs to be a plurality of leaders, whatever we call them. And we'll look at that more in another session. So that there might be a team that reflects the beauty of God's gifts that he wants to give to a church that we might have Churches like that church in Hamburg, the Hamburg Project, where there are those who with with, um, apostolic genius, where are those with prophetic voice, where are those that are gifted evangelists, 
where there are shepherds and where there are teachers of the Word of God, all working together as a team of leaders so that the church might be multifaceted, having all these circles rather than just one and being stuck and stagnant because of it. TBS Seminary is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world and developing good Christian servant leaders. You have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and or financial support of TVS Ministry. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.